Hey everybody, Scoutcrafty here again, TGIF. Again, you made it through another week. Uh, this month is flying by, isn't it? The 2020 is flying by. Before long, we've been saying it's 2021. A um, couple things to talk about today. I know it's not a mosh of a day, but uh, the first thing I have to get to is a mistake that I had made the other day about... Uh, about the paint can opener so let's go check okay, it out okay now uh, real quick uh, you remember uh last week we did this uh what i thought was a paint can opener because that was i was told that by the guy i bought it from but uh and i'm sure it was used for that many a times because it worked very well for opening the paint can but what this was originally designed for uh, was for opening up the vacuum seals on certain jars such as this you know this jar as being a mason jar mason jar is a fantastic uh, invention it was invented by john landis mason in 1858 he was a tinsmith and believe it or not his claim to fame was inventing the lid he invented the lid that would be a standard screw on for many different uh, jaws and things like that. But uh, what was so interesting was this two piece lid here uh, enabled people to uh, vacuum seal their fruit and preserve uh, their vegetables and fruits, things like that. You put it in boiling water, would create a vacuum. And then there was a little top here, if you listen, that's how you could tell if the, the seal was broken. You know, if you push down, you didn't hear nothing. It was still vacuum sealed. Now, what this easy lift was meant for is that you would put it between the lid of the, uh, the, the thread of the jaw and this lid. And when you squeeze it apart, it would make that sound, you know, and you knew that the the uh the seal you you know you opened it up and that's what it was for without uh, mangling up the jar lid but there were other ones that came uh, other jar openers that uh, did a good job um opening these but uh this is what that was for now on that same subject if you do not have a uh, a dedicated paint can opener this is the best one that i found and what the funny thing was on ebay one time i bought like 50 of these because uh nobody was bidding on them and i and i picked them up cheap so uh this is without a doubt the best and one of the best tools i have in the shop and i use it all the time if you're using a screwdriver to open your paint cans you're doing yourself a disservice you need one of these tools it's a bottle opener here but it's also this opens the paint can and uh and what a great job it does so uh, if you don't have one of these and you need a paint can opener, this is the one you want to get just like this with that little up twist here. It's a great Okay, tool. next up, uh, I have a couple of NOS items that I've had for a while, and I know uh, a lot of you like NOS. NOS stands for New Old Stock, and I guess we find it so interesting because it's almost like taking a trip back in time when you find some of these things in their original packaging, and, and especially if they're unusual. You know, a lot of us have never seen that kind of packaging because it was usually discarded back then. And I have a couple things that uh, we'll check out now, some screwdriver sets, NOS. Okay, here we go real quick. This one here is a... Uh, it was manufactured by Great Neck, and you can see Great Neck saw manufacturers incorporated, and it was in uh, Mineola, New York. Now, my buddy traded Joe. Joe lives not far from there, and it's a, it's pretty close to here. It's in Long Island, and uh, back then, you know, uh, Great Neck used to be a big producer of different tools and things like that, but you can see Made in USA. Uh, nickel, bla nickel plated, and you could see here, it was on a, a regular, this would, uh, would be a less expensive carded item, and it was kind of a shrink wrapped plastic around the screwdrivers, but you can see what type of screwdrivers are, a little bit dusty, but uh, that's one set, and this is the other set here, now, um, pretty interesting, because this one here, uh, it's chrome vanadium, which I always liked, uh, and you can see here, this one here says Whitestone, New York, Whitestone, New York is like a one mile from where I live, made in the USA, um, and let's take a look at these, because this one here is in a box, you know, and very nicely done, right, had the red tips on the bottom, uh, let's take one out here and take a look at what it looks like, now it says cross ground tips, so I don't know what that means, but it looks a regular tip to me, and uh, maybe they meant it's ground this way, so it's across the... Uh, the grain some metals have grains to it there it is a chrome vanadium you can see it's stamped in there that looks very nice and look at this handle here that's pretty nice huh when you get it, it's like you know it's never been banged on or mangled or anything and look how nice and <laughs> i love the i love acetate handle screwdrivers and this is big 
I got big hands and this thing is a, a big handled screwdriver. So these are a nice set. This is a very nice set. Something that you would have around the house or something. And you can see here, uh, it comes with the uh, two Phillips heads and uh, three slotted heads. But I just thought you'd find that interesting how screwdrivers you might have bought them years ago might have come like this on a shelf or something in Times Square store, one of them old stores that are now defunct. And uh, let's see on the back, there's nothing on the back over here and it has a warranty information uh, somewhere on here. Yeah, there is the, uh, the sizes that it contains and uh, pretty interesting. I always uh, I always enjoy new old stock because we'll never see this stuff again. Okay, next up, well, it is Friday and, uh, you know, the weekend's here. So what a better time to get uh, started on this beautiful... Now, again, we didn't figure out what this tool is. And let me tell you what I looked under. Now, it was made by the Whitney Metal Tool Company. Now, Whitney Metal Tool Company was known for making uh, a lot of punches, uh, sheet metal punches, hole punches, things like that. My friend Noah sent me a beautiful picture of a nice vintage Whitney tool uh, punch that he picked up. And um, that's a real nice punch. And But I don't know what this now, again, it, I said, I called it an all before because that's a, a general term. But another term for something like this would be a fid. Uh, a marlin spike was something that you could use to take in and out or rope knots and things like that, which I, I doubt this would be for them because... Uh, uh, Another thing, if you were in prison, this would be called a shank. So there's a lot of things you could call this particular tool, but uh, we'll try and find it in the catalog before I make the video. I'm going to do a good search and try and... I'm sure they had this listed in one of their catalogs, but let's see what it looks like. It's got a little flattened area up top here. You know, I, I don't know if it's that meant for banging or if it's just like that. Again, if you were meant to use this by hand, if it was meant to be in... Uh, uh, a marlin spike or a fit or something that you would splice wire cable uh, you wouldn't want this to be banged on it would be smooth you know so but if somebody was banging on it and using this tool for something it shouldn't have been uh, so anyway let's get working on this and and see what we could do here it it don't look bad I mean you know the condition here this is the little rough area here where we got to get out and clean that out and uh, and we want to keep all the dimensions exactly the same so let's get started Now this is why I suggest you have multiple wire brushes. You see here the stiff wire brush wasn't flexible enough to get into this area, but this one will be. Now here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see here it took off all that uh, spotted rust and everything, but you can see here we still have some dings, some dents. We want to get those out, you know. And uh, again, we want to keep the tip just the way it is. It's fine, not too sharp, not too dull. Now here's a problem we have on here. You see around the edge here, we want to keep this edge nice and so, but we want to clean that edge up because that, you know, that edge is a little unsightly there. Um, you see how that wire brush got all that out of there, so no problem. And then we want to see about this here, this flattened area. I would really like to make this rounded because I do believe this was a hand tool and not a banging tool. And uh, and that's it. So let's uh, let's see what we can do to get this cleaned up and then get all this nice so that all these uh these imprinted dents and and things like that that we can get them out Okay, we are done with the, uh, the sanding, the polishing, the buffing. Now all we have to do is fill this in with paint. We uh, took out some Comet, you know, regular Comet abrasive powder. Scrubbed it good in there. Made sure, because sometimes you get that buffing compound we'll get in. Uh, scrub both sides real good. Then we did it with denatured alcohol. Now we're going to put it, uh, put the paint in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the paint in here heavy and just use your finger and wipe off the excess. And that'll take off the letters and things like that. And uh, see what it looks like when we come back. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this all looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Everything is back to the way it was when it was new. You can see here the letters. We did it in with a little regal red. Rust-Oleum regal red. And uh, it's just a nice color in there. And you can see how nice this uh, the metal came out here. Um, and the back, look at the back, what we did. We got rid of that little flattened down area. 
and just made that nice and and just just nice and soft to the touch and this is a great little tool and, and like I said now I tried to look it up I looked at the uh, Whitney Tool Company started in 1910 and they uh, became Roper Whitney and then that they took over a lot of tools like uh, Pexto and things like that the only thing I could find was this all here and that was on eBay um, and you can see it was a later on and it says that the name of this tool was called a tapered awl and you know you could use this much like a, you ever see a spud wrench you know a spud wrench uh, they use a lot of times to uh, align a holes or two holes and, and I'm thinking that since they were big into sheet metal a lot of times you need a tool like that to align holes or whatever but that's how this tool came out and it was a uh, it is a lovely little uh, tool isn't it I would love to see if they uh, still make them today or or uh, or even have any history of them at the company. I couldn't okay, find Okay, and them. last up, I wanted to uh, say a special hello to uh, Kirk Carrillo and his son Noah. Uh, Kirk sent me a letter, a beautiful letter, and uh, it's enclosed a couple pictures of a uh, Stanley 299, vintage 299 utility knife that he did for his son after watching our challenge uh, from last year. He's been a subscriber for about six months, but he saw one of the older videos and, and he thought it would be something nice to do for his son. And, and this is what he did. He did it with the black and red. I think it looks really smart. And um, also he put the acid etched his uh, logo, his, his K5, I guess is his logo, and he put that on the front. So I thought that was really nice too. So uh, Kirk and Noah, thanks so much for tuning in and thank all of you for tuning in. I hope you have a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.